So today's topic, there's the agenda on the board right there. Today's topic is um, we're going to read an article in Upfront Magazine on immigration. So I figured we would start by maybe talking about some current events. What's going on right now in the news that it seems to just be constantly all the time? Donald Trump. Donald Trump. And grabbing by the... Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Not that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, anything but that. Good. But go ahead. Yeah, Donald, Donald Trump. Trump. Okay. <laughs> Donald Trump. That sounds good. The debates. Donald Trump. The debates, yes. The debates uh, Donald and Donald Trump. Trump. So, so is it fair yeah, enough to say that the these two right here? Yeah, Hillary and Donald. These two are just dominating? No. Hillary is winning. Donald Trump is losing. No, no. They're dominating the news. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Donald Trump's just the uh, only Okay, so let's, let's put Donald... Let's put Mr. Trump over here, and let's put Hillary over here. You know anything, maybe their views on anything, maybe especially something we're going to talk about today, um, that that idea of immigration. Wall, build a wall. Wall, good job. A wall. Build a wall, you're exactly right. What did you say? Here you go. Snickers. Wall. 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 All right. Where the side do you want to put gun control on? Trump or Clinton? Uh, Hillary. 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 Yeah, she wants gun control. I said it. I said it. I said it. All right. What do you two want? I need two. Huh? <laughs> I said it. <laughs> okay. Anything else besides guns and a wall? That's it. That's the only thing they stand no. for. Go ahead. Trump for illegal immigration. Immigration. Good. I was waiting for somebody to say that. Women's right. Women's rights. Who's that for? Hillary or Donald? Hillary. 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 I got not sneak up for that. <laughs> <laughs> Women. Let's just say that. Okay. Anybody else? Oh no. <laughs> uh, raising our economy. Economy. Shoot! Economy. Who's that under? Donald. Donald. Econ. Good. Okay. So let's get back to that that issue. I guess guns and women that we've got, and what else we have? A wall, immigration, and econ. Okay. Anything else for Hillary? Let's give Hillary one more. What else is she um, big into? Really, really big. <laughs> Trump's taxes. <laughs> or emails. <laughs> that's very, that's very Trump. Or, Trump, or Trump's riches. <laughs> Trump's taxes. <laughs> Trump's taxes. Emails. Trump's greed. Good. Okay. Um, let's let's get back to that issue. That that good that good thing about immigration. Does anybody know um, what they're both? I mean, I understand Trump wants to build a wall, you said so on and so forth. What's the difference in, what does she want to do? <laughs> uh, uh, Lane state down, gun rights, or? Think about just as far as immigration terms. Just think about it just as far as. <laughs> Make everyone equal? Sort of, yeah. Think about, if he wants to build a wall for immigration. Oh, she wants, she wants to. Bring them in. Yes, exactly. She wants hope. Oh, she's for open border. She's for doing it the right way, right? Yeah. Yeah. Good. So we'll say, but there is actually been less immigration than 2002. Than sort of. Sort of. Sort of. We're worried about what they're talking about is his big thing is illegal immigration. Her big thing is. Bring the path to citizenship. So if we look at it, let me get the up front. If we look at the article in the magazine. Right to the middle. Very middle of it. What page? I don't know if you said very middle. Anybody else that didn't get candy on round one, what would you like? Right. What? Oh. Snickers. Snickers. What would you like? Candy. I can get one. What about you? Mm -hmm. 
So then we're going to go back just to touch on a little bit of history on the next paragraph. Does anybody want to start it? No, I'll, I'll take the next paragraph. It says, all the way back to George Washington and Benjamin Franklin. So America's battle over immigration dates all the way back to the Declaration of Independence. At 1776, among the document's grievances against the British, the British king, King George, was obstructing the laws of naturalization of foreigners. Does anybody know what that means? I know it sounds like a really crazy sentence, doesn't it? But obstructing the laws of the naturalization of foreigners. Does anybody know what that means? Basically, at that time before America was America, we were just the colonies. And what the king over there did said, we're not going to let people come over to your to the new America. We're not going to let new people come over to get established. Because what happens with more people? Yeah, you get more powerful. And they, they can't control that anymore. So that kind of worried him. So naturalizing new arrivals were also on George Washington's mind when he addressed a group of Irish in 1783. The U.S. was open to all of the oppressed and persecuted of all nations and religions whom we shall welcome to participate in all of our rights and privileges. So he's saying it doesn't matter who you are. Now this is 1776. That's what, 200 and something years ago? He's saying, listen, whatever's going on in your country, you're allowed in ours. Right? Does anybody want to take the next one? How is it naturalization? Um, the next one is this. It's the third paragraph down under George Washington. This is not just a matter of uh, principle. It was a necessary to America's survival. The founding fathers had baked, um, vacant, vacant, vacant country. It says denial of immigration was uh, vital. Vital. Uh -huh. Vital. Vital to help fill it up. Yeah. So, so we're going to skip the next couple paragraphs, but just to see what they're saying right there. When when we became America and we became the United States and Think about how big America was, and there wasn't anybody there. So we had to have people come. We had to have immigrants come. And we had to understand that that's the only way that we were going to get bigger. <coughs> so the next couple paragraphs just kind of talk about um, Benjamin Franklin and his thoughts on things. And uh, here's a good little, little key notes about some of the people that came over after we became our own nation. The nation's first census. Does everybody know what a census is? Have ever heard a census? So a census is taken. What is it, Mr. Shaw? Every five years or ten years? A census is taken, and basically they poll out our entire society, and they want to figure out how many people live here, what our ethnicities are, so on and so forth. Basically, it's just a, a poll to tell us how many people are in our country, and and all the inner workings of it. So this is a census from or 1790. They, they counted nearly 4 million people, mostly all Protestant Christians from England, Wales, or Scots. But in the 1830s, newcomers began to arrive in great numbers, nearly 5 million people in 30 years. So we went from a population of 4 million to a population of 9 million. And about a third of them were Irish, poor, and they were Catholic, and nearly a third were Catholic, poor Germans. So you have to understand, here are all these people pouring in, pouring in. And they're here to call the country what? They're here to call it the, their own country too, right? Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> okay, so for the most part in the 19th century, the U.S. government continued to encourage to fill this country up. In 1862, Congress passed the Homestead Act, which opens up huge territories west of the Mississippi River. So this is the kicker right here. You know, we haven't been past the Mississippi yet. Everybody know where the Mississippi River is? Mm -hmm. Yep. It, it goes right, it goes, Mississippi goes right to the north, then west, and then down south. Yep, all the way down. Yep, you're exactly right. So think about this. When the Mississippi River was opened, <laughs> if you wanted to move out there, the government literally gave you land for free and said, go build out there. We want you to. 
Not like nowadays, you don't even have to work and build your house. Back then, you just walked up and were like, I want to go live here. They handed you a piece of paper that says, this is now your land. Have a good day. Go settle it, farm it, blah, blah, blah. Wish that was still the case. So this is a, another way that we invited more and more people into our country. Do you see what it was like in the olden days compared to what it is right now? Yes. So back then, we were, we were asking what? Come to the U.S. Back then, we were like, please come. And now what are we saying? Stop, please don't come anymore. Don't come back. Don't come back. And not only don't come back, but these certain people aren't allowed. Or these certain people aren't allowed. But these people are allowed. See? Mm -hmm. So now we're, now we're trying to, now we're creating a big, big stigma. So who wants to start under Chinese exclusion? Go right ahead. Yeah. Uh, Chinese had a hard time in the middle of the mid 19th century. About uh, 300,000 Chinese came to America. Many settled, settling in California were eventually ridiculed to help with that. What's that? Eventually recruited. Uh, recruited to help build America's first transportation. Transportation. Transcontinental. So that's a transcontinental just means from all the all the way across. Railroad and then uh, influ influencing the influx. Yep, this influx. Influx of strange strangers and inspired by protests and local laws to protect free white labor or a as in 1962, America law put it, it backlash led to the Chinese. Uh, to the Chinese. Exclusion Act. Okay, so that led to the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882. So basically what he just read, when everybody found all that gold in California, Nobody could pick up the phone or, you know, call somebody and say, hey, we found a bunch of gold. Y'all get on a plane and fly over here. Come pick it. We'll all be rich. So it took years and years. If you look at that timeline at the top, it's got a really good, good timeline. I could put it up right here. But it kind of shows you all the different struggles that we've gone through over immigration, over the small things. So once, once Congress found out all the Chinese came over to take our gold, well, they passed a law against it. So by the 20th century, the newcomers were growing stronger. More than 27 million people now, by 1930, entered the U.S. So from 1880 to 1930, here came another 27 million people. So we did say we were at 9 million, right? Now we added 27 million to that. Mm -hmm. So many of them were Polish people, Jewish people, Greek people, Italians, Eastern and Southern European. They had strange new cultures and languages. Isn't that what a lot of people get scared of, though, when somebody from a different country comes over? Don't they worry about, you ever hear somebody say, well, it's a family tradition or it's a Southern way of life. Do you ever hear that? Yeah. You ever hear that? I grew up hearing that from my from my late grandmother, but it was always she did things a certain way because where she was from, because she was from the south, and people up north did it a different way. You know, it's kind of something that I grew up and didn't really until I got older kind of understand that yeah, people in the south do cook different. So <clears throat> often racist comments led to crime. First immigration restrictions came upon us and they said, you know what, we'll take Northern Europeans and Western Europeans, but we don't want any more Europeans from the East and we don't want any more Europeans from the South. Sorry, you guys are just kind of too much on our country. So here's that, here's that thought again, it came up 100 years ago. It says, look, we don't want any, we don't want any guys from Eastern European, but we'll take the Northern European, Europeans, excuse me, Europeans. <laughs> So it wasn't until the Civil Rights Movement in 1960 that many Americans recognized that all the stuff that they had passed was wrong, it wasn't right. So after 1965, they canceled all that, and then since then, 
about since right around this date, right around 1965, this is where you got your influx of Latin Americans and of Asians and of Africans. Oh, once those laws got pushed down, that's when they said, oh, we can go do the same thing that everybody else did 100 years before, 200 years before. It's the land of opportunity. So according to that, about 14% of the U.S. population was born in a foreign country. So now, well, now we're up to date. Now we're getting around 2000, 2001, 2002, getting close to where we are now. But we're saying that at that time, there's 14% of the people that were actually born in a different country. Anybody want to take uh, the next one, starting at old and new? Go ahead. According to Ellen Percy Crowley, a George Geographicer, Ge Geographicer, and college, college University, Colgate University, Colgate University, yep, University like the toothpaste, Hamilton, New York. The warrior worries many Americans have about immigration have changed much from centuries ago. Then it's now concerns have to do with sober, sober sovereignty. So it's being sovereign, it's like a a nation that's sovereign. Go ahead. Job issues of security. The loss of traditional American values. Right there. So, says. Yeah, so right there she even says people then, all the way back there. And people now are still worried about the same thing. They're worried about our values. They're worried about our jobs. They're worried about our security. They're worried about our nation changing this great place that they came. Oh, these new people. When he comes over, he's going to change everything. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of like, hey, is this still 1775 or is this 2016? Kind of having the same thoughts. So recent disputes between Clinton and Trump highlight how the immigration debate continues. Many Americans reform, but are divided over how to do it. One of the fiercest battles has been over the 11 million. Okay, so this is the big one. This is what Trump, why does Trump want to build a wall? The biggest battle is over the 11 million undocumented immigrants living in the U.S., predominantly from Mexico and Central America. So, Hillary says what? Let people come in. Yes, but we're going to do it the right way, right? Yes. And Trump says, No, we should not. No way. And not only should you not, what am I going to do with the 11 million that are here? Y'all are gone. Oh. Yep, going to send you back to wherever you're from. Right? Well, it's a, people think, people look at it from either way. Some people look at this as this not being the right way. So, how's that every Mexican back across the world? No, if they're illegal. Or is if they, if they, from what, from what I've understand, I think it talks about it here in just a second. He, he kind of wants to. If you've got, if you're a troublemaker, if you've got a criminal record, and you're over here illegally, he wants to send you back. And then you can apply and do it the right way. That's what he's saying. Now, her, on the other hand, she uh, wants to leave the people that are already here, and then just um, have have a revamp system where she can allow people to come in and we can do it by our law. They can pay taxes, sign up for our insurance, and so on and so forth. So, after searching for two decades, the total number of undocumented immigrants is to about 11 million. So, in 2013, a bill settling a 13-year-old path to citizenship for undocumented immigrants passed in the Senate. So the Senate said, all right, it's gonna, if you all want to come to our country, here's, the, here's how we're going to do it. It's going to take you 13 years. You have to come over here and work and prove to us, take classes, take English classes, prove to us that you can be a citizen. We'll do it for 13 years. But all the Republicans own the House of Representatives. So what they said, they said, no way. They threw the bill away. Said, no, sorry. So President Obama attempts to protect the immigrants from being deported. <clears throat> he signed an executive order and said, you know what, you're not allowed to try to send them back home. That's, that's illegal. You're violating their rights. 
Well, about that time he did that, the Supreme Court, it went to the Supreme Court, the Republican Senate there, went to the Supreme Court, Supreme Court said, you're not allowed to do that. It's too much power. said that we would let 10,000 people, 10,000 refugees in from that country. That's it, 10,000. A lot of countries in, in Europe, like Germany and uh, France and a lot of countries are taking hundreds of thousands of people. But 31 state governors refused to say, I won't even let you in my state if you bring them over here. So far, the courts, the courts have been with the states on this side. So, you got me? Ow. How such issues are handled any, may depend on the outcome of the election. Clinton promises to push for immigration reform and fight for a path to citizenship. Trump says that he's banning foreign Muslims from entering the United States and building a wall. He'll deport anybody who's undocumented or anybody that has a criminal record that is here undocumented. He might let you stay if, you, if you're not a criminal. Trump had called for deporting all undocumented Im immigrants, however, that is likely to face opposition with a divided Congress. So, so here's the last paragraph. And then it'll get us to our thinking what if. So whatever the case, the U.S. will continue to be a nation of immigrants. Research organizations that future immigrants and their descendants will make up an increasing percentage of the U.S. population. The professor says that just as the past, these immigrants will likely become as fully American as past generations have. As for those old worries about new arrivals, after all, she says, we're not all speaking German right now. So when all, when all, like we talked about before, the potato famine, when all the Irish, when all the Chinese, when all the Italians, all those years, all those people that were already here said, we're all going to end up speaking German. Oh, we're all going to end up speaking Italian. Well, what do we speak? English. There we go. Or some, or some sort of it, right? Okay, so this leads us to our bigger question. And now, when you... When you look at it as far as as far as that, as far as being president, 
those aren't the only two people you could vote for. You could always, you know, write my name in, Coach Wiggs for president. But no, I'm not running. But yeah, you could all you can you can vote for anybody you want. But look at it like this. We just talked about their their feelings on one big issue. One big issue, and that's immigration. They they have tons of different feelings on tons of different issues, right? So what we're going to focus on is just immigration. Okay? So here's our prompt. Here's, here's how we're going to look at this little assignment. You have just been elected President of the United States. Okay? Just now. Boom. You're, you're the President. Say the person that's sitting next to you can be your Vice President. Lord help us all. <laughs> so one of you, every one of you guys in your own little, in your own little place, you're an elected President of the United States. The first issue we're not at war, we're not getting bombed. The first issue that comes to your desk, boom, comes to your desk is immigration. Everybody's freaking out. Hey, we've got to do something about it. Boom. Now you've got to act. So you have some big decisions to make. Use whatever we have talked about, whether you liked it or whether you didn't, and kind of formulate your own opinion on what you would do as the newly elected president, what changes, what changes would you make? Would you open up the border? Would you close the border? Would you allow people to come in? Would you allow them not to? Would you not change anything? So give me three to five sentences. Now remember, this is not something that, there's no right answer that I said in, in our reading today. This is all about what you think. You're the president. So you take the issue of people coming over to our country and you tell me how you're going to solve it. Are you going to build a wall? Are you going to say it's okay to come over? Are you going to say, no, we need to, hey, you know what, I think what's best is I'm not being mean to everybody or I'm not, but maybe we should just slow down on it a little bit. Maybe we've got, you know, maybe we've got too much going on right now. So there's really no, no right or wrong information you put down. You just got, you've got to fill it out and tell me why. If you're going to build a wall set, tell me why. If you're going to say, don't worry about it, tell me why. If you want to open up our borders and let more people in and say, we're already a melting pot anyway, anyway tell me why. So that, that was your, your question. What would you do on the topic of immigration if you're elected president right now? What are your thoughts or ideas on our current situation? Tell me what you would change. And remember, you're the president. These are your decisions. So go ahead. Put your name on the top two, and then you can write right down in the below, in the below of the paragraph where I left that open space. And if you have any questions, let me know. Are we writing all those? Yeah, you can write at the bottom. Right here at the bottom. That whole bottom half that's written down here. That whole bottom half you can write on. The whole bottom half.
remember, tell me an example. If you want to change it, tell me why. That's a sentence right there. What you want to do and how you're going to change it. That's two sentences. seeing a lot of you guys write more than three sentences. That's good. For one bonus point, once you get done writing, for one bonus point, write in parentheses down here, who do you think is going to win the election? I have no clue. And if you're right, I'll come back and bring you candy. How much candy? Raise your hand and I'll come pick it up. Let's be quiet. Let everybody else finish a little bit for a second. Almost done. Anybody else done?